There's no place like home. Hi there, and welcome to Home Wizards, where we love to help improve your home and improve your life. I'm Cindy Dole, and Eric Stormer is with me. Hey, Eric. Hey, how are you? Good morning to you. Well, so uh, we have lots to talk about, and I know that a lot of people who uh, t- chat with us on Facebook have been really, really excited about spring being here and wanting to get into the whole entertaining outside, living outside thing, and a lot of people are getting a new umbrella and a new patio furniture and pillows, and so I thought, Eric, that maybe we could talk about some ways to uh, start to get into spring and summer, that whole outdoor living thing. Yeah, it's a great topic. You know, we just spent time up at that San Francisco Garden Show where we saw such great examples of what outdoor living can really be, and I think the thing that struck both you and I, and I, I think you could speak to this as well, When you look at your backyard, it just becomes like the blueprint or the plan view of of an exterior home. So, for example, it's a floor plan. You have one area for lounging and sitting. You have one area for barbecue. You have one area for socializing. Whatever it be, you create that great plan so you have this real concise idea of how that yard can be so it doesn't become overwhelming too big to deal with. Mm -hmm. And and it feels cozier, too, I think, if uh, your space, if your backyard, your front yard, your side yard, whatever it is. In fact, by the way, I've seen some really cool um, transformations with front yards. You think that all you have is a front yard and you've got traffic going by on the street. You're not going to be able to have privacy, but you can. Right. But uh, I think that if you create those little nooks and crannies, almost like you have multiple little baby rooms, um, you know, now you're going to feel like you have destinations. Yeah, it seemed to be the most successful thing that we saw in terms of how you kind of perceive your yard. You know, mm-hmm. there's that classic front yard. You've got your lawn and then a, a little garden bed along the house, and that's basically what most people kind of, I think, real, uh, understand that they can do. They're limited by their vision because they haven't seen these great examples. But really, when you do take into consideration that every space outside, because you know, we in Southern California can live outside so much of the year, it can become such a great space where you can have an outdoor kitchen, you can have a great fire pit, whatever it be. There's such great possibility when it comes to the outdoor living. Mm-hmm. So let's think about what are, if you had have a checklist, because I know that a lot of folks are kind of getting their to-do list ready and, and thinking, okay, what are the elements? What are the basics? And you mentioned seating, right? You want to have a place to sit down and perhaps a table to dine or maybe uh, read a book or, you know, put down a glass of wine. But what else? How about lighting, right? Lighting you got to have. Well, you sure do. And I, and I just did this last week in my own home. And um, we had some old sort of antiquated outdoor lights that were the old incandescent bulbs. And they were really sort of zapping us in terms of our energy bill. So I went the LED route and not thinking that they would have enough illumination and enough capability to light in the past. I was so overwhelmed by buying one box from a big box store of these light kits. They're LED. They come with four up lights that where you can light a tree or a part of your architectural detail on the exterior of your house. It, it has its light shining up from the ground to give you that illumination. And then you also get uh, five path lights and a transformer, all for about $82. And, boy, what a difference. And, and really pennies on the dollar when it comes to energy usage and what it costs and the energy that it sucks out of your uh, bill every month. It, it's just overwhelming. Plus... The most important aspect of it is that these bulbs last 15 to 17 years, which to me is unheard of because I spent so many years in my own yard replacing out these bulbs, and I kept thinking, now, why are these things always going out on me? I can't stand it. And then, I, you know, after a while, you get worn down and demoralized, and then it's like, you know what, forget it. We'll just yeah. find a flashlight when we walk ah. out. I'm sick of it. No, we want to make it easy because who has time? I mean, a lot of times we that's one of the reasons why we put off some of these projects or, or even trying to hire somebody because we think we don't even have the time to, to do the thinking, you know, so that's exactly. why we're here. All, you know, all you have to do with these lights is plug the transformer into a, an electrical outlet outside, and then you just run these wires, and you only have to bury them if you have exposed dirt about five inches into the earth. And, and if it's in a garden bed, that's a pretty easy trenching job. 
Otherwise, you can run it, the wires, you know, all throughout your, your uh, ivy or bushes that you might have, and you'll never see them because they're black anyway. And then you place your lights and plug them in, and that's basically it. Mm-hmm. And there are also these, uh, we, we were talking about how a lot of companies, GE and, and several others, have a wireless radio solution for, for outdoor and indoor lights. And I'll tell you why that is such an appealing option, because uh-huh. you don't have to trench. That is definitely the hardest <laughs> I'm getting the feeling that you don't like to do much digging. Well, what you have... <laughs> really? <laughs> you hear that? I, I'm feeling a little anger. No, there's, it, I, it might even be resentment. Uh, uh, it's resentment come on. The shovel. Are we going to have to put you through, like, digging therapy or something? You might have to, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. It's just such a nice option, though, to be able to set up your transformer. It's a wireless transformer. Mm -hmm. Put your lights wherever you want within range of that transformer, and then you're you're good to go. And to me, that's that's the next phase in all of this. Now, the next thing also you want to have is uh, sound. And there is also a cool wireless uh, solution. This this company called Sono. Um, it's not super cheap. I mean, it's about three hundred bucks. But boy, outdoor music makes such a big deal. And if you have an iPod or any kind of a player like that, this is a series of speakers that are all wireless and communicate with this little system. And so you can move them around outside. You know how yeah, great. And, when, and you know, three hundred dollar price point again. To your point, is not to me that bad because when you consider. One of these docking units like Bose makes one, and I think that's close to five, six hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of what model number, what level you go. So to me, that's a great bargain. And you know, you don't need like like audiophile sound quality outside. It could just be sort of ambient music, and it really brings a nice element to to outdoor grilling or socializing outside. Because the key is to make this area just like a living room, you know, that's called the outdoor living room. You want it to be a place where you're going to want to spend time out there, and it's going to change your life because now you're going to have a a place to relax. You're going to spend time with family and friends. It isn't just a place to maybe, you know, put some shrimp on the Barbie. I mean, it's more than that, you know? Yeah, it really is. It's a well, for me, it's a place to play pinochle and wear a hat. <laughs> All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the outdoors a little bit more, about some of the ways to perk up a picnic table and uh, to really make your, your outdoor furniture and your furnishings lovely and inexpensive. We're going to do all that coming up next. Home Wizards, where we love to help improve your home and improve your life. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole here. We're back in a moment here on KFWB News Talk 980. That's sunshine in Southern California, don't we? Aren't we lucky? Welcome back, Home Wizards. Cindy Dole, my buddy Eric Stromer, who isn't in the sun this moment. Eric, tell everybody where you are. Are you buried in snow? I am buried in about a <laughs> foot and a half of snow in southwestern Colorado, a place called Stonewall, doing a little horseback riding with my kids. It's spring break time, yes, and I am actually on a horse. Oh. oh, you're on a horse right now. Wearing well, li- I am, and it's amazing. And you're wearing linen? This new radio stuff we can do where you can run, wa- wander on a little pony and still be on a radio show. What an amazing thing. That's and boy, talking about uh, Colorado, you should see some of the beautiful stuff going on here in terms of the, the nature. I and bet. The ornamental grass well, that are here. And, oh, man. We'll have to put some pictures up on the website about that. You bet. And as we're talking about uh, enjoying the outdoors, before we get to more of our ideas, um, you know, it's Easter Sunday tomorrow, and I and my favorite candy Every year is Robin's eggs, those malt balls. Do you have a favorite Easter candy? You know, anything dark chocolate, I don't care if it's shaped like a battleship. I, I love it. I, I think it's just great. So, yeah. Yum. Whatever. Yum. And we have, by the way, on the website all kinds of great ideas for um, dyeing eggs and getting ready for your egg hunt and uh, celebrating, um, you know, spring and, and the Easter season. Just go to yourhomewizards.com and, and you'll see it right there. So, back to outdoor living and some ideas. Now, one of the many things that we saw at this, this uh, garden show in San Francisco was the use of old things to really make your outdoor space look cozy. Didn't you love that wagon, for instance, the old flyer wagon, that red wagon they had in the yard, and it kind of gave it just this, um, I don't know, very artistic and, and cozy and homey look. Yeah, and, you know, speaking to that point, out here in Colorado, I'm seeing a lot of people that have these really cute old-fashioned bathtubs just sitting out on the side yard, and they use that to then use, become a planter. Mm-hmm. You know, and to a, to a point, it can be really, um, really kitschy and great. I mean, if it's just a bunch of junk on the lawn, it looks terrible, obviously. But 
if you use it creatively, like we saw at the San Francisco Garden Show, boy, mm-hmm. there's some really great ideas out there. And we loved, too, the use of that everyday stuff you can find. It's so common at the big box stores, that bamboo fencing material that's so lightweight and it, it comes like in a roll. And here we saw it, it was painted almost like a... Uh, chartreuse green, and then in front of that, I mean, this think of it. If in your yard you needed some privacy, you could uh, secure it somehow. And, and Eric, you can tell us how to, yeah, to that, secure it. Yeah, it's a great option to use that bamboo screening because it's inexpensive. It comes in a roll. You just simply roll it out, and if you want to Cindy's point, you can you can paint it any vibrant color. I think it's beautiful when those vibrant colors pop through the nat- natural colors of the outdoors. And then you can use just uh, baling wire, like twist ties, like how you would fasten a plastic bag around some existing chain link fence that you might have, or or an uglier fence that you don't you don't want to see anyone you want to cover. <laughs> you don't want to see it. I don't want to see you. <laughs> there, there might be some fencing you hate. You know, you, you use this as a quick cover up. It's great. great <laughs> and then we saw that when you do have that little privacy living wall, wannabe living wall. You can make it more livable by putting some plants in front of it uh, and using contrasting colors. So if you did have that chartreuse green uh, in this little um, setup that we saw, the designer chose burgundy. Um, I don't want to say it was almost like a maple tree. And beautiful, you know, Japanese maple with those those very fragile leaves. And that against the green was so pretty. Yeah, it sure was. And also what I loved was the use of small spaces. A lot of folks that may listen might may not have a, a, a large lot or a, a single-family residence, but rather they may live in a condominium or an apartment. And there's such great ideas when it comes to balcony gardening. It's all about vertical, you know? Yeah, it sure is. That's right. And if you go to these, well, in fact, if you just Google, you can put um, living wall kits. And they, there's a number of companies. One is called the uh, the Wooly Pocket, and it's a fabric, a uh, series of little fabric um uh, you just kind of adjust to the wall. You fasten it, and it drains. And you can put then the edibles, herbs, succulents, whatever. And they have they come in like a galvanized tin, different materials. But it's a kind of cool way to then just think upward and and then plan your outdoor space. Yeah, outward. Hey, do you remember the pocket lady at those local fairs? Remember? Yes. Yes. <laughs> My mom did that for years. Right. But that's what those vertical gardens remind me of. Just large. Canvas pocket pockets. like skirts yes. against the wall with little plants. Oh, like a clown that always has, you know, a surprise coming out of some pocket. Exactly. That's exactly right. Uh-huh. Hey, wait, are you calling my mama a clown? No. Oh, okay. I love Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we can't forget fragrance. Um, I mean, this could come in the form of, like, lavender and basil and sage and oregano or or even citrus, which, by the way, we're going to talk about in a little bit. That there, our citrus trees are possibly in jeopardy. Um, but yeah, uh, and, and, by the way, that's my favorite scent of the, all time. The, scent, the citrus, the blooms, the, oh, the, those blossoms. Oh, what about jasmine? I'm loving the jasmine blooms, too. Yeah, mine are blowing up at home. They they really did a great job this year. And, and that, that perfume fragrance when you yeah. walk up to the front door makes you glad that you live where you live. I love that. So now how about a fun way to turn an everyday uh, picnic table into something great? We have a picture of this on Facebook. It's basically an, an old picnic table that you could even find at a garage sale or maybe you have one sitting around in the garage or maybe you're using it and you just cut out the center. So how would you cut out the center, Eric? Because we're going to put um, a galvanized tin and some, some plants inside that center. Yeah, you could use a, a, a jigsaw if you have it, a reciprocating saw, and you cut essentially a, the shape of your container that you're going to use out of the top of the picnic table, and then you just simply place like that galvanized, let's say it's a, a 6-inch by 24-inch galvanized tray. That would sit right in that opening that you cut out, and then tell them what's inside. I love it. Oh, well, I mean, I, I love the succulents, and my, one of my favorite places is the California Cactus Center. It's in Pasadena. Uh, and By the way, that place overwhelms me. I think that they've got the great selection. Oh, yeah, and, and it's a good overwhelming. It, it takes you to another world. It makes you literally feel like you are, um, it's kind of an avatar experience, you know. Right. But um, the succulents in everything from the, the lime greens to the silvery grays to maybe even some pops of purple. And just kind of because they're a nice, tightly planted, low growing um, centerpiece, if you will. And so now you don't, well, unless you want to hide from the person who's sitting across from you. But here you have a nice view, and it's just a little bit of a, a greenery in the middle of your picnic table, and it doesn't obstruct your view. And you can have, you know, conversation with the person across. Yeah, you know what I love about that, too? My picnic table is really old and weathered, and we spend a lot of time trying to figure out what to put over it. 
to cover it to then put our place settings over that. Mm -hmm. But with that succulent garden right in the center, it just seems to all work, and it ends up sort of dressing up an old, dingy-looking table. And then it, when you put your plates around your wine glasses, it just looks so beautiful. I love it. Now, here's another one. And let's say you have less of a space, or you just want to have more side tables, you know, a little uh, bistro effect, if you will. Everyone has containers sitting around the house. I know that you do, Eric, and we do too. Or if you want to get new ones, look especially for some some vibrant ones that you like, or you can paint them in a beautiful glazed paint. But use that now as your table. That's going to be the, the vessels for your table. And what you're going to do is you're going to get a nice big piece of glass. You can go to um, a glass store to help you with this. And then ask them to cut a hole in the center. And so, again, you're going to have a plant coming through the middle of it, but then the, the perimeter is an area now to have as a side table or it could be a bigger dining table. Yeah, and a piece of glass, you know, like the, the size of a, a cocktail table or mm-hmm. a, a small uh, low boy table, I mean, it's really inexpensive and affordable, probably 60 to 120 bucks with that cutout also. It's just not that expensive, so it's a great option. Now, if you want to add um, a little more greenery to your area, besides just in the small pocket of the table, I mean, you definitely want to get some container plants and think of having that maybe as a vine or um, as a couple of trees and, and maybe have two of the same kind, which acts like kind of a bookend effect, don't you think? And then it kind of gives you more um, continuity. Right, exactly. It's beautiful. Um, I, you know, I love all the use of, you know, the small, twinkly Christmas lights. Yes. Stuff. You, you intertwine that in, in your trellises or your balconies or your, even your trees, and that's a great, very inexpensive way to gussy up a backyard. If you don't want to go the route that we were talking about before of actually installing some kind of lighting system, garden lighting, that's a great option. Now, if we want to have the sound and the look of water, we've got to help people figure out a way to repurpose a garden urn and turn that into a fountain because it's so easy, right? I mean, it's a, it's a doable project in a day. Yeah, a, p- a pump at a big box store, about 50 bucks, depending on the size and how much force you want coming out of the top of that fountain. And, and you know, it's a couple of quick cutouts of whole, you know, if you've got a pot, you got to run a cord out and then you, you caulk around that so it's watertight. Pretty simple to do, very easy to, to find information on how to do it online at yourhomewizards.com, obviously and other sources, but a great option. Now, something that I I think all I'm seeing is a huge trend is to not only bring, you know, things that you would find inside your home outdoors, like the furniture, like the experience of music, lighting, etc., but also artwork. And there's a lot of art that you can that you can use uh, as different tricks. You can, uh, for instance, buy a really nice mirror, a framed mirror. And I've seen this work really well to not only uh, give you uh, the, the illusion of more space, you know, um, or just to kind of give it um, an artistic look as as a framing uh, backdrop for your garden and your seating area, if you will. Right, and especially with a little confined area like a porch or a balcony or one sectioned off area of your yard, nothing makes an area look larger than a mirror. And, and, you know, if you do a a frame like an old old beat-up frame that's maybe got gold leaf on it, you may want to throw a clear coat over that just to protect it from weathering, but other than that, it can be out. It can stay out on its own. Yeah. No you just want to have it in a shady area because later on we're going to talk with this landscape designer who used glass in his garden and it was in full sun and the mulch caught on fire. Oh, man. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, wait, wasn't, the, wait, wasn't there an issue with the Disney concert hall when they had to take the shine down? They might have, the yeah. Same reflection thing. Yeah. Well, anyway, so come on up. We're going to switch gears, although it's very similar. We talked about, um, you know, the outdoor living experience and bringing maybe the scent of citrus to uh, your yard. Wait to hear about what's been going on. This terrible disease that has been discovered already for the very first time in our own backyard, and it could really mean terrible things for our great citrus. So we're going to talk with our buddy Lance Walheim, who's a uh, gardening guru, and he has uh, citrus crops in his own yard, and he's written books on citrus. So we're going to find out how to stop this thing and protect your, your lemon trees, your orange trees, your grapefruit trees, because, Eric, I know you have them. Yep, and I love them, and i got to retain them. we got to keep them. We That's all next. <laughs> Eric Strober, Cindy Dole, and the fun continues on Home Wizards after this. Thank you.